Getting screwed news. One nuclear disaster is too many. So why are we still hell-bent on building new nuclear reactors? The Nuclear Regulatory Commission, the NRC, has approved plans by Detroit Edison to build a new nuclear reactor in the Enrico and Fermi Nuclear Generating Station, which sits on the shores of Lake Erie, halfway between Detroit and Toledo, Ohio. The proposed Fermi 3 reactor would be built on the exact same site where the plant's Fermi 1 reactor had a partial core meltdown in 1966. So if a plant has already had a near disaster, why would anyone want to build another nuclear reactor at the same place? Let's ask Kevin Camps, nuclear waste watchdog with Beyond Nuclear. Kevin, welcome. Thank you, Tom. It's great to see you. I remember in the early 70s, I think it was, the book came out, We Almost Lost Detroit. I, at the time, I was living in Detroit. I was working in Detroit. I read that book, and I was just like, ah, oh, stunned. We had no idea in 66 that we almost lost Detroit. Um, first of all, you want to tell us what happened? Well, they kept that meltdown very quiet for about a decade, and it wasn't until John Fuller wrote that book. And it was uh, We Almost Lost Detroit. came out in 1975, uh -huh. nine years after the meltdown. So people knew from a few paragraphs in the Monroe paper that something had happened at Fermi 1, but they didn't know what. And it stumbled along for another several years until 72, it permanently shut down. Mm -hmm. What happened was they lost two fuel assemblies. A piece of metal came loose in the reactor core and blocked coolant flow to these two fuel assemblies, which melted down. And this is a, a sodium-cooled plutonium breeder reactor. Whoa. And one of the scenarios is plutonium could have pooled in a critical mass and caused a, a small-scale nuclear explosion. That was one possibility. Well, if it's plutonium, even small-scale, I mean, the, 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 the bomb that took out Hiroshima by today's standard was a tiny, tiny, tiny bomb. If the worst had happened at Fermi 1, they would have blown the whole facility to smithereens, and the radioactive fallout would have been catastrophic. We would have they came Detroit. all too close to that. Incredibly, the Advisory Committee on Reactor Safeguards at the Atomic Energy Commission at the time had advised against this reactor design. Uh -huh. One of the members was Edward Teller. So a reactor design that's, you know, bad enough to earn the enmity of Edward Teller is probably a bad reactor design. So they ignored him. They ignored the United Auto Workers. There's a famous legal case called UAW versus Atomic Energy Commission. So Walter mm -hmm. Ruther took this as far as he could to the U.S. Supreme Court. UAW lost by a 7-2 to two vote. And the green light was given. They built the reactor, and they had a partial meltdown. What was the basis of the UAW's objection? It was the safety risks. And I believe they actually really? cited Edward Teller. They had 500,000 union members within a 50-mile radius of Fermi 1. Right. So Fermi 1 melts down, <laughs> goes out of business. Fermi yeah. 2 comes along. And now there's Fermi 3. Tell us about this. Well, Fermi 2 is operating since 1988. It's the largest General Electric Mark 1 design in the world. This is identical in design to Fukushima Daiichi, units 1 to 4, except it's scaled up. It's supersized. So Fermi 2 is as big as Fukushima Daiichi units 1 and 2 put together. Whoa. It's 1,122 megawatts electric. Only a difference between the two is that Fermi Unit 2 has a lot more high-level radioactive waste in its storage pool than all the units that melted down and exploded at Fukushima Daiichi put together. And now Fermi 3 is a new and improved boiling water reactor. They call it a economically simplified boiling water reactor. And the simple economically simple does that a fancy way of saying we cut corners and we made it on the cheap? That and they're gonna gouge the public, both ratepayers and taxpayers. That's the economic simplification. Okay. Detroit Edison is not gonna put a penny of its own money into this thing if it can get away with it. They'll try to get ratepayer subsidies, they'll try to get taxpayer loan guarantees and no is, skin in the game. Is Detroit Edison a private corporation or a public corporation? Well, it's it's shareholder, it's investor owned. And so So it's privately held. Yeah, they so, would. So they're all about the profits, and as yeah. long as they've got Price Anderson, they don't care if it melts down, as long as they don't live next door to it. We're seeing that at Vogel Units 3 and 4 in Georgia, where $8.2 billion in federal loan guarantees, that's taxpayer money, and then gouging the ratepayers. That's how two reactors are being built in Georgia right now. They would love to do the same in Michigan if oh, they could. Wow, wow. Is there any, anybody seriously pushing back on this thing? We have a coalition of environmental groups that's six and a half years into the fight against this thing. We've filed three dozen contentions against Fermi 3, but it's coming down to the last days of this licensing proceeding. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission has made its 
wish is known, which is to rubber stamp this license now. And we're geared up to go to federal court. We have a number of solid issues that we are going to appeal. Wow. Well, good luck with that. That's, this is, uh, this is uh, astonishing. Now, recently the president was in India. And I, I read a New York Times story about his trip to India, and it said that basically he was there as the salesman for, I think it was General Electric, it was somebody who makes nuclear power plants. He was pitching nuclear power plants to India. Yeah. Is that true? General Electric Hitachi, which is a Japanese firm, actually. Uh, Westinghouse Toshiba, another Japanese firm, but they have American branches, of course. Right. So yeah, you know, what the hoopla was about in India, Obama and, and the Prime Minister of India make this great breakthrough. What was the breakthrough? that after Bhopal, U.S. nuclear reactor vendors will not be held liable for a nuclear catastrophe that takes place in India because one of their reactors blows up. That's the bottom line of the breakthrough. So you got GE, you've got Westinghouse. Westinghouse's CEO out of Pittsburgh was quoted in the press saying, we don't want to be sued by a billion Indians. That's the great victory here. So yeah, it's all, like you said, Price Anderson is U.S. liability cap for a nuclear catastrophe. This is an Indian version. In 2010, the Indian parliament said, you know, these U.S. companies need to be held to account for their reactor designs. Fukushima was a general electric reactor design. And the damages in terms of human suffering and property loss, I mean, we're talking 125 billion easily, not, yeah, if not, not to much more. the damage to the biosphere. And and, and all future generations. Right. Northeastern Japan is severely contaminated thanks to General Electric and a containment that was too small and too weak that's been known since 1972, except they didn't tell anybody. Wow. Now, meanwhile, Mother Jones uh, is reporting that because of the uh, U.S.-China climate change deal, quote, nuclear power could also be a winner. China has, uh, already has 26 nuclear reactors in the works with an additional 60 planned according to the Nuclear Energy Institute. These will likely become a key component of China's push for low carbon energy. Really? And again, uh, Toshiba is in there, uh, Toshiba Westinghouse, with this new reactor design called the AP-1000. It's for advanced, passive, 1,100 megawatts electric. Those are the same reactor designs as in Vogel, units three and four being built, only the Chinese are ahead. China has minimal to non-existent environmental and public health regulations. And in fact, the former NRC chairman, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, the former FERC chairman, Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, several years ago, 2010, went to China, toured the AP-1000 construction sites, mm -hmm. and reportedly were pretty horrified by what they saw, only they didn't really mention it publicly anywhere even since. Are these boiling water reactors also? This water. is a pressurized water reactor design, but the likes of Arne Gunderson, again, working for an environmental coalition in the southeast of the U.S., identified major containment flaws. So they call it an inherently safe reactor. Natural forces will come to play to prevent a meltdown. One of those natural forces, convection currents of air to carry heat away from the core, if there is a flaw in the containment, if there's a hole in the containment, that natural convection current will pump radioactivity into the environment. And Arne Gunderson warned about this several years ago. So their, their big, cool, new, fancy safety feature is we open the reactor to the outside air to cool it down without finishing the sentence that will, therefore, all that air will pick up all that radioactive material and it'll blow into the local community. If there's a flaw, and there have been several flaws in the United States with containment. Astonishing. We just have a few seconds left. Is China developing a domestic nuclear industry? I'm surprised that they, that they haven't done that. Yes, they are, but they're also uh, they're building uh, so willy-nilly that they've got U.S. corporations in there. They've got other countries' nuclear industries in there. Right. There was just a scandal in the U.S. where uh, you know Chinese industrial espionage on the likes of Westinghouse in Pittsburgh. So here we have Chinese nationals visiting our country, visiting our nuclear power industry, touring our plants, and Senator Markey made a, a big deal about this. Amazing stuff. Kevin, thanks so, so much for dropping by. Thank it's you, always Tom. great to see you. You too.